Hi, and welcome back to Retro Rambles, and to the fourth and final part in my series on the Elite Games. And this week, I'm going to be covering, well, the legacy of Elite. Because, quite simply, Elite has had a hell of an effect on the gaming industry over the last 31 years. Every space sim, every trading space game, every space combat game that has been released, be it Free Space, uh, Tachyon, Freelancer, any of those games, they're all compared on some level to Elite. And I'm going to talk about a couple of them today. Uh, I'm going to try and make this as organised as possible, because uh, regular viewers will know I tend to ramble a bit, hence the name. But, uh, with the best will in the world, I'm up against the clock once again, due to other commitments. So, I need to make this as concise and as structured and as organised as possible. Yeah, I know, I heard it too. But, uh, shut up. <laughs> okay, so, uh, let's crack on. I'm going to start with a game I just mentioned before, Freelancer. Freelancer was released in 2003 for the PC. It was the sequel, in some ways, to the early piece, the earlier game, Star Lancer, which I believe was out on a console or two. I might be wrong on that one, as you've probably gathered. I've not. I've just remembered actually about Star Lancer. So, uh, but Freelancer was developed by Chris Roberts, who was famous for creating the Wing Commander series, starting in 1990. Uh, Freelancer was famously first revealed in E3 at 19, in 1999 and promised a wide, wider scope of exploration and trading and open worldiness. That is a word I've just invented it, of open worldiness that wasn't really there when the finished product came out four years later. I bought Freelancer the day after it came out. Uh, I remember vividly going into, I lived in Blackpool at the time, going into Blackpool to buy it and being there because like, it, it was the summer. And if you lived in Blackpool, if you had to go, if you had to go into town on, the Black, in, on a Saturday in Blackpool, you went first thing in the morning. I do remember going into, into game at 9.30 in the morning to buy this bloody thing. And it's a great game. It's fantastic and it will be getting its own video uh, in the upcoming weeks. In fact, most of the, in fact, all the games I'll be talking about in this video will be getting their own videos. But Freelancer will definitely be getting its own video. For those of you who aren't familiar with the story of Freelancer, it's set several hundred years in the future after a massive war in the solar si in our solar system uh, has caused the good guys. I believe that was the Alliance 
to fire off into space uh, several colony ships that were built by nations. Uh, there was uh, the American one, which was the Liberty, uh, the British one, uh, the Bretonia, uh, the German one, the Rhineland, and there was a Spanish one. And I can't remember what the hell the Spanish one's called. Uh, if I find out, I'll run it across the bottom there. <laughs> I can't remember what the bloody Spanish ship's called. Uh, but I do remember that the Spanish, when you, well, anyway, when the game starts several hundred years after that, and you are this one guy, Trent, who is in Liberty Space, and you have a series of misadventures, if you will, around the controlled space of the three powers. Because the fourth power, the Spanish power... Uh, oh no! There was another one, there was the Kasari, which was Japan. Oops, sorry. Yeah, there was Kasari, which was the Japanese one. So you have these four space, these four, these four territories, but the fifth one, which is the Spanish one, I can't remember what happened, but they're basically pirates, because they're the Corsairs. And uh, they're like pirates and iron and all that stuff. Uh, so you start off in Liberty Space and you have to do missions, but you do some limited trading. And the game progresses as you progress through the story. It unlocks more of the space for you to travel through. There was a famous mod uh, that allowed you to unlock everything from the start, which is, to be honest, which is what I used to do. Because the story of Freelancer was good, don't get me wrong, but it was very limiting. It didn't really give you the sense of openness that you want in a space exploration game. Because it used jump gates and auto parts and, and waypoints and all that, like Wing Commander did. So it did feel a little bit limited. But if you had the mod kit for it and you could mod the game so it would be open from the start, it was great. Now that brings you quite nicely to the fact that Freelancer has been heavily modded over the years. There's been complete uh, game overhauls for it. L ones that come to mind are the Discovery one, Freelancer Discovery, which I've not played. There's a Battlestar Galactica one, and I mean modern Galactica, the uh, sci-fi channel re-imaging of it, which is fantastic. It's really hard. Uh, I recently found somebody is vamping up the graphics for a more modern version of Freelancer HD. I saw that on YouTube a few weeks ago. I love Freelancer. I, I, I really do. And once I get it working on my PC, <laughs> which isn't as easy as it sounds, I will be playing it and doing a video on it. Uh, and, and most people know that I, I emulate a lot of my stuff on my Mac. Freelancer is one of the games you can't run on a Mac, would it be Parallels? I don't know with Parallels, but I know with uh, Play on Mac it doesn't work, and it won't work in VirtualBox. It's to do with the, ne the needs to run uh, Direct3D and stuff like that. Anyway, da -da -da -da. so that's Freelancer. Great game. Heavily modded. Hev no, heavily, heavily modded is a lot of fun. Heavily influenced by Elite, because you have the trading element, the exploration, you can choose your ships, you can mod your ships with weapons and missiles and stuff. My only complaint is the control's a bit of a bugger. Excuse me, because you have to use the mouse. But it's a good game, and if you can find it, it's 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 really good, because my it's on Microsoft's games. I'm fairly sure it is. Anyway. So yeah, freelancer, good fun. Go and play it now, I'll be checking. Another game that springs to mind. Oh God! You know how I said that uh, First Encounters was bugged and glitchy and bugged. Oh no, it has nothing on this. Oh, this one was. Oh dearie me, where do I start? Train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, it had potential to be such a great game. Battle Cruiser three thousand AD was just very ambitious and very promising. And when it was finally released in the early part of 1997, it was a massive disappointment. For those of you who've never played it, I'll tell you a bit about it. It was in development from as early as 1993 by a chap called Derek Smart, who was the Phil Fish of his day in gaming. He was very controversial very, very outspoken on news groups and bulletin boards. 
Uh, if you don't know who Phil Fish is, I'm so sorry. I didn't sleep very hot tonight. Uh, if you don't know who Phil Fish is, uh, he developed Fez for the modern consoles. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, not important. So, Battle Cruiser 3008D's objective was to put you in command of the aforementioned Battle Cruiser, but properly in command. We're talking Star Trek in command type of thing. You controlled every aspect of this ship. You could fly the ship, you had to you know, manage the systems, uh, you could trade and do stuff like that. But the point of it is, is you were sort of it was sort of like a, a federation setting, you had to go out and do space stuff. But you had to control crew rosters and every aspect of running a ship. Like if you're in a if you're in a firefight, you had two choices. You could launch your fighters and let them get on with it, or you could take command of the fighters yourself. And that is brilliant. It just didn't work very well. It was just incredibly buggy. Again, you had problems with navigation. You had problems with the control system was glitchy. It was just with no, with no. I don't mean disrespect to Mr. Smart because his idea was genius, and it is. There were later versions that were put out which dealt with the problems. I mean, they're all available for free on the 3000 AD website, and you go and look for yourself. It was very ambitious. And I used to play it, I used to attempt to play it on a regular basis, and as recently as five or six years ago, I'd have a crack at it. You know, run it on a modern, P well, on a Windows 7 PC, uh, Battle Cruiser 3000, Battle Cruiser Millennium Edition would run fine. And he's done things like Universal Combat, which is the same thing, but different. But the art, but the, but to me, the concept of being able to control the entire ship in the, you know, like a captain, and you know, when you when you when you've been boarded, you get to, you know, dispatch fire control teams to go and take out, you know, your intruders, and then put them in prison. And that's brilliant. And going to a space station to do a diplomatic mission, and you've got to send the right people over on the shuttle. I mean, you have got a transporter. I think you got a transporter. That is. This is another game that I will be covering. Uh, I did try getting it running on the old Mac last week, and it was a bit of a mess. But I'll persevere because it's really worth a go, and it's something I'd like to do. I will play it really badly. But we shall see. Good game. Just it, It's a shame. It's a shame. A lot was promised again, like with Freelancer, several years later. A lot was promised but wasn't delivered. There's a game coming out uh, in the not too distant future called Rogue System, which in its way I suppose is a re imaging of the whole Battle Cruiser 3000 AD uh, ethos. You are in command of a ship, and you have got again to micromanage every aspect of your ship. Uh, a chap called Scott Manley has done a video about it, and uh, you have to power up your ship systems properly because you're using nuclear reactor, otherwise, it just goes boom! And that's a bit messy, and you don't want that. So, yeah, Battle Cruiser 3000 AD. Such a shame, such potential. So sorry about this. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Ulite, a remake of the original Elite. Brilliant game, running native on a Mac as you can see here. Fantastic little game, exactly the same as the original Elite, but with a few added differences. Well, one major added difference is that you can mod it, and you can mod it as much as you like. You can have uh, different ships, you can have different planets, you can have realistic looking nebulas, hell you can even have the sound soundscape from the Amiga version. So when it loads up it plays the Blue Danube like on the Amiga version and it has the same gun sound effects and it's fantastic. Heavily modded. I will be featuring this at a later date. Yes, I know I should have done it as part of this video, there's this series, but I haven't had the time. Something like this needs time and dedication. And uh I have got a lot on, uh, which I'll be talking about uh, at the end of this video, because we're about to take a little break, but more on that in a bit. 
El Uli has been around for about uh, just one minute. Ooh, it says there. 12 years, 2003 to 2015. It has been a couple of legal battles over it, but obviously everything's fine because here it is. It's a great little Elite clone. If you want, if you know, if you'd like to play the original Elite but with a bit more of a modern pizzazz to it, this is for you. Great stuff. It's on Linux, it's on Mac, it's on PC. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it's even on things like Morph OS and uh, such like, but we don't. I don't know. Anyway, short and sweet. Elite. So yeah, Elite and its legacy is long and interesting. And I've only scratched the surface. I will be coming back to Elite at another time. I will, because four weeks and four videos, I don't think it's done it justice. I'll be coming back to Elite, obviously. Uh, I am still, I am going to be continuing my series of On Frontier, which is on my own channel. The link is below in the description. I could just talk about Elite for ages. And I don't want to be boring. Elite has been a massive part of my life to the point where I was a Kickstarter contributor for Elite Dangerous. I've been on I've been with Elite Dangerous since the closed beta, which was May last year. I'll be on the closed beta for Elite Dangerous Horizons by the end of the year with any luck. Which I'm very much looking forward to because that's the start. I've been able to land on planets. Yes, it's only rocky, uh, barren planets at the moment, but in time we'll be able to land on Earth and Alioth and such like. And I hope you've enjoyed this series as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. And granted, today's video has been short and sweet, but I'm concentrating and doing really well here not to do it in multiple takes. Uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of bloopers I have from these videos, and I'll be putting them out sometime towards the end of the year. But elite, but uh, yeah, that's elite, and uh, I'm taking a break for a week. I'm going to London a week today, so there'll be no video next week. But there will be a video in two weeks today. A very special video. Now it wasn't what I was originally going to do, but it occurred to me this morning that I should really be doing a video about something very special because two weeks today will be Wednesday, October the 21st, 2015. Now, if that's just set your retro genes jumping up and down, you know exactly what I'm going to be talking about. I'll play out with some music, but before that, I want to play an advert that I found on, the, on, on YouTube on Monday to do with what I'll be talking about in a fortnight. Watch this, and you'll see. I'll see you in a fortnight. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care, and... See you in the future. Bye. The future is now. The taste of a 2K generation. Carrying on a long tradition. Pepsi perfect. The future is now. You better drink fast or you might miss it. Same great taste. Can't resist it. Pepsi perfect. The future is now. The future is now. And don't forget, if you haven't already, press the subscribe button so you can get notifications and whatnot about our latest videos. And if you've already done that, you're not off the hook. Down there, that thumbs up thing, give it a press, give us a thumbs up, you know you want to. And also, leave a comment, start a discussion, tell us what you think, tell us if we've got anything wrong. Because it's not us that's wrong, it'll be you that's wrong, but, you know, it's free country, you can say what you want. Bye.